Hi, I'm Harry, I'm the tech lead on Trace. Today we're going to look at the Bitrise Trace add-on. We're going to have a look at some of the features and how you might use those to debug problems in your application. So first up, let's have a look at performance. The page we're looking at at the moment shows aggregated performance metrics for all users who are using an app with the Trace SDK installed. Some of the metrics you'll find on this page are things like the number of crashes and errors an app's generating. We've got the cold and warm start latency for an app. We've also got a few metrics around network requests, such as the number of network errors, uh, the network request latency, the number of network requests being made. And if we scroll right to the bottom, we've got some consumption metrics around CPU and memory usage. If we have a look at these charts, uh, we can see that our latest version, 2.633, is using a lot more CPU and memory compared to all our other versions. Uh, so let's drill down into this a bit further and see if we can trace the cause for this. So the page we're looking at here is the metric detail page for our CPU usage. We can see from the top chart here that there is a consistently higher usage compared to all the other versions, uh, probably about twice as much. And the whole point of this page is that we really want to filter down the number of sessions before we start drilling down any further because 44,000 sessions is quite a lot. So let's scroll down to these bottom charts and what these show is a breakdown of the different types of sessions and their attributes. So we've got things like the app version, what country they're from, what iOS version they're on, what type of device they're on. And really what we can see from here is that there isn't any difference between the other sessions. So really it's just needs to be focused on our latest version 2.633. So let's click on that one to apply the filter and we'll scroll back up. And we can see that's it's about a tenth of what we were seeing beforehand. So there's about 4,000 sessions that are on our latest version, 2.633. And just to double check, there isn't, still isn't any difference. It's definitely a problem with the latest version. So let's drill down into this a little bit further and see if we can pinpoint where that spike is coming from. So what we've come to here is the session explorer. And what this is going to allow us to do is to inspect real user sessions and see the kind of journey that they took through the app, some of the attributes, and what we're focused on now as some of the performance for their session. So at the top here, we can see uh, the app version that they were on. We can see the length of their session, the country that they're in. If we scroll down a bit further, we've got some individual events for this user. And interestingly, right at the end here, we've also got a crash, uh, but let's come back to that in a minute because that might be interesting. Uh, just below that, we've got the performance for this user. We can see here that there is a CPU and memory spike for the user, which is happening around the 19 second mark. So let's scroll down a little bit at the user journey and focus on that 19 second mark, which is around about here. If we scroll right to the bottom, uh, we can see that there's some view controllers kicking in about 19 seconds. Uh, and this top one here is generating a crash. So this is probably where we want to focus our attention on. So let's click on that crash and see if that gives us any more information. So what we're looking at here is details around that crash we saw in the Session Explorer. We can see it last happened three days ago and it's occurred 42,000 times for 35,000 users over the last two months. So it's quite a wide affecting crash that's been around for some time. Uh, if we scroll down, here we can see details around each instance of that crash for a user. So it shows us the stack trace, which is going to be really useful in debugging that issue. And on the right here, we can see those same session attributes that were showing up in the session that we were looking at beforehand. And you can still access that same session as well using the session tab at the top there. Back to the detail page, also right at the bottom, uh, we've also got all the other threads that were running at the same time. And uh, we can go in and inspect those too. So this is going to be a really useful tool in debugging crashes that are coming up for users while your app is out there in the wild. So let's look at how you can get the Trace SDK into your app. We've got some great documentation about the variety of ways you can install it. The simplest method, which is available to both iOS and Android, is to use the Bitrise workflow step. And it's as simple as just adding that add trace to SDK step right before the step that builds your binary. There's a couple of other methods you can use. You can use SPM and Cocoa Pods for iOS, or you can use Gradle for Android. Whatever method you use, as soon as you have the SDK installed and you start running the app, it's going to send that data back to us and we can show you in the UI. 